Synopsis Podcast Massacre contains spoilers and adult language. For more horror, visit us at our website at texaspodcastmassacre.com. To another episode of Texas Podcast Massacre coming to you from Houston, Texas. I'm your host, Mitch, and with me, as always, is the uh, the chatterer to my hell priest, Nate. <laughs> I take the chatterer over hell priest. If like someone had to call me a name, like chatterer compared to that seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, well, they, I, I gave, sure that's why I gave one. it to you. Yeah, you have such I have such chattering delights to show you oh great i'm excited <laughs> welcome to another episode of <laughs> texas a, podcast Massacre. i'm excited all right i'm, excited. There you go. I'm, I'm yeah well, it's you're, pleasure. you're the guy who's just <sighs> you're just you're just you're just going in you're just like letting this thing cut you over and over again you're like yeah keep, keep it going let's, yeah. let's keep this train moving here. look welcome to another uh episode <laughs> jesus of texas podcast massacre where each week we take a look at a different horror movie and debate a horror-related topic with our unsuspecting victim, usually not someone we would consider a horror fan. This week, we are bringing you both pleasure and pain with uh, the latest Hulu adaptation uh, of Hellraiser, which we got to see as a sh- secret screening. Um, I'm not saying that you know we're better than anyone because of that. I'm just saying that uh, <laughs> Nate oh, thinks was- Nate thinks so. But the point no, is, no, never. <laughs> No, we we got to see it early, so we were we, uh, wanted to, I, I think, talk about it now that it's ex- released for everyone and, and people have kind of been able to see it now. Um, we will, of course, have a still a spoiler free um, uh, section of this, but uh, yeah, going to talk about um, you know this the new one. Now we had just done Hellraiser two, so you know we, that's a, that's a that's a minor debate. Question. Hellraiser two colon Hellbound. Just got to throw that out there. Well, oh, no, it's Hellbound no. colon Hellraiser too. Ex- well, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. it has the colon in it. What? So. Um. You know, they we we we've talked about this previously. We've always done not the original, like not the, not the first of the series. What about reboot? So like, what if we had done this Hellraiser first? Is that in line with our never doing the, the first of a series? Because this is a a reboot. I'm gonna absolutely, assume we're- absolutely, yeah. Because the first ever movie we ever did in the podcast was Alien Covenant. Don't listen to it; the audio quality is terrible. But that is a sequel to a prequel. <laughs> that was the first movie we ever did. So yeah, I, I think that's fine. Absolutely no problems with that. Yeah. Well, there you go. Right. I mean, that's it's on brand for us. Uh, it is. Yeah. So this is. Uh, yeah. This is. This was something. Um. Um. I'm excited to see. I, you know, I will say it was it was interesting watching this in theaters versus I think what most people are obviously doing is you know what streaming it. Um, maybe you have a home theater or a really you know bougie setup, or or maybe you're just watching it on your phone. You know, I I think I'm curious if you think the experience is going to be different. We'll get into that, but um, yeah, you can certainly check it out on Hulu. Um, before obviously we get into this week's movie of the week, let's have something a debate question, of course. Bid our father, the sea king, rise from the depths full, foul in his fury, black waves teeming with salt foam, to smother this young mouth with punch and slime. I haven't had enough right, punch and slime I, I, lately. I, I, so. I, I'm just I'm hijacking this because I have I have a Mitch like rant to go on here. Are you ready for this? Oh, okay, sure. I didn't even wait for you to say okay. I just went went for it. Oh well, yeah. I, the okay. So it, in the uh, in it's the like that meme of that like the girl's like yelling. The mom just like has the blanket pulled up like her eye like what the hell is just happening? That's that's my expression right now. Go I ahead. Don't know Sorry. What that is, but I it it sounds good. Unlike what I'm about to talk about. So 
in the preparation for for Hellraiser this week, doing a lot of you know looking up the movie, uh, how people are liking it, what they're talking about. Uh, I can tell you the speed of Cenobites in the Dead by Daylight game. Mitch, your all-time favorite game. Uh, that no one will ever play with me, but yes, go ahead. <laughs> no one will ever play with you. I looked up Look, a lot of stuff. Sorry, while, while I, have I, was a, looking, I have a rant yeah. to cut off your rant. Why do I have to get my friends to change port settings to crossplay? Every game in existence has figured out how to crossplay between your with Xbox PC. and your PC. PC. Yeah, Somehow you this game requires you to reconfigure your port settings. Do you know how hard it is to try to get your dumbass friends to configure their port <laughs> settings to play a game to do something besides Halo for the 800th fucking time? <laughs> Get it your shit together. Get in a shit factory. Put in a shit. I don't care. But Dead by Daylight. Get it, fix go your to a shit. port factory. Go, go to, to a port, port factory. Fix it. Get your extra ports. Whatever you need to make crossplay yeah. work seamlessly. Go ahead. Nate. Yeah. Now, get, get the containers. Put them in the ports. Yeah. You didn't. You didn't know that the, your your rant was going to get superseded by my rant. So there. You I go. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. It's uh. It's a cascading effect. Are we in the second configuration now? What's happening? <laughs> uh. So anyway. Uh. <laughs> Man, I kind of lost my, I kind of lost my, <laughs> took uh, away my, your, my, my, my thunder, my thunder of this, but okay. So in, in preparation for this movie, you know, looking at everything, looking at uh, the reviews and obviously looking up all the actors and actresses and the director and everything that we normally do. We have a little bit, we'll have a little bit more information on this one. Cause we saw uh, we were in the theater for a nice Q and a with the people that actually did the movie with some cool information. But as I was looking through I was just looking, I was just looking around, you know, just looking around on sites and, you know, there were, there was more than one secret screening. Uh, there was more than one secret screening at Fantastic Fest. The other was, of course, worst movie of the festival, Werewolf by Night. Werewolf by Night, Mitch, is a 7.5 on IMDb mm -hmm. and a 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm -hmm. My rant is basically this. All ratings are garbage. So they're all, right. all garbage. If all that's right. if if Werewolf by Night is one of your the top horror movies of the year, according to people, I don't know what the fuck's happening. So anyway, not much of a Mitch rant there, but just what is happening? No, I'm worried. Do you think did you pull that because I just threw you off your game, or is that really all you were gonna give me? Um, I was gonna do more, but I really, I really just I lost well, Steve. I, 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 I lost Steam. I lost Steve with port port settings. I don't. <laughs> I wish I could have changed the port settings and changed the movie while this was screening uh, at the festival. Yeah, it's. Uh, I I cannot believe how well received this not good fifty some minute <laughs> movie is. I don't understand. Well, okay, listen, Martin Scorsese. Um, let here's here on, here's the hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm I'm bushing up my eyebrows. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I okay. So first off, I oh think yeah, you, you you know you know you know how uh how Werewolf by Night was better than Black Phone. You know you know how it is. <laughs> well, okay. So let's let's unpack two different things. Was. Sure. Werewolf by Night, the worst thing I saw at the festival. Yeah, probably not. No, it wasn't. Now, am I disappointed it was one of the secret screenings? Of course. I mean, it was coming out in a week. It's not even really a full length film. It's Marvel is so mainstream too. you know, you kind of go to those kind of movie. Like we go to those movie festivals because we want to see shit that's either a little hard or, or a little more buzz around it. Kind of I, I, I ideally good would be a factor as now. Well. But Werewolf by Night I, I, it certainly has a, I mean, it's it's certainly more of an homage and it has that aesthetic of like the old school, you know, Halloween, like monster movies, right? I mean, it's the story. Yeah, some of my the favorite story, films are, the, the are good story, versions of that. And the story, sure. The story in itself is decent. Look, it's, at, it's, look, at, this, look at this review from CNN. Okay. Told with wry humor while tapping into unexplored quadrants of comic lore. It's a bit too gory and scary for younger kids, but a gift to fans that raises enticingly monster us possibilities. Monster us had a hyphen in it. That is not the movie I watched. What is happening? 
I never do. I never do this. This is the only movie I will ever do this for. It was fairly gory for a Marvel film that people might take their kids to. Oh my god! Oh my god! Take the kids to on Disney Plus. I just go watch Hocus Pocus too. Just just save everyone some time. That's Um, that would be my take. But this movie, yeah, this movie or Hocus Pocus too. You'd go Hocus Pocus Pocus too, huh? Not quite as toothsome as one might hope, but no howler either. This is a thin, fun Marvel outing that hints at bigger monster business to come. Oh, so the best thing about it is that there might be more good monsters potentially in the future? Okay, we're in agreement. Unfortunately, that was a positive review instead of negative. So I guess I guess I'm in agreement with some of these. All right, I'm done. That this segment will never happen again, but I just wanted to get, I just wanted to get that out there. I mean what is happening? These are the same people who thought it comes at night was incredible. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Do you think this is a case? Oh, they both have night in it. They both have night in three words. Oh my god. Do this you think is... this is a case where you're just because look, you are you are heavily biased against Marvel films. Period. Right. I'm I'm biased against bad films. What What is the highest rated Marvel? What is the highest rating? If we were going to do a final cut on any Marvel movie. What would get the highest rating and what would that rating be? Probably like a seven. Okay. And what, what movie? Maybe. Oh God. I'm definitely going to judge you on your answer, by the way, but that's winter funny. soldier or the, that first Marvel one where Thanos was like a slasher dude murdering everyone. But then they all came. You mean the infinity so war? Worthless. Yeah. That one. Yeah. That was actually like, Oh, people are actually like getting like, ganked That's which good. when 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 lisa and i went to see it you yelled at us you, you berated us for a bit and then said oh and i'm sure everyone comes back in the end right they did the, yeah the end of yeah and i said the no they did the they didn't one. at the end of that movie <laughs> it, was the next, fuck you, it was the next one well you didn't say oh, that you God. said in that particular God. film uh, yeah it ended it ended a little more bleakly good had some finally stakes, yeah. all right no, I mean, the stakes you knew had no, there were no stakes, but at least it ended more bleakly. I'll get, you know, that's fine. So, yeah, those two, you know, and you know, say. you know, in uh, Empire Strikes Back, like no one really, like, no one really majorly dies, right? Like, it's, yeah, because Star bullshit. Wars is also, Star Wars also is not good. Yeah. Oh, for Christ's sake. So, I forgot you like <laughs> Star Wars. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because I like my movies to like tell stories on their own about, and not be part of an be, overarching thing. That they can't all be movies about la- uh, people, you know, screwing fish, man. I don't know what to tell you. Um, well, that's the downside. I mean, I'm sure there's even more. I fish want your mom, I want your mom to call in. I just want, I want to know. Does, is, is there are there days uh nate's mom listen if you're listening to me just ignore nate for a second <laughs> if you're listening to us right now i'd like you to call in to our hotline and um i really would love to know do you sometimes wish like i know nate makes you watch all these terrible movies three three four six two four, does six. does do you ever just three, wonder four, like four, god can we just watch like some can we just watch like one marvel film or one like mainstream thing that like other people know about like we I, used to I go see what uh, is your Hunger tell? Games. Hunger Games was every Thanksgiving. Look, but Hunger is, Games ended. That was it. I don't know what. It's over. That's well, uh, your poor mom. Like, do you wonder, like, she must have friends that are like, oh, what did you do this weekend? It's like, she can't be like, she has to say, I just, I saw a movie. I went to see a movie with my son. She can't tell him any other details because one, they wouldn't know what the movie is. And two, what is she going to tell? Oh, yeah, I saw a movie about a lady having I saw sex. Piranha 3, I saw Piranha 3D. It was a big deal. Yeah, sounds yeah, great. I saw Titan where a woman uh, gave birth to a car baby. We did not watch. We did not watch that one. Well, guess what, Nate's mom? That's on the that's on the holiday watch list. I'm sure. Uh, well, you and I went to see it on my birthday. So we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you drive like even farther away to a theater than usual. It was. It I was did. like a happy birthday. It was a deep once, drive. once again, happy birthday, Nate. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Nate's mom. <laughs> let me know. I'd love to know how, what do you feel about Marvel movies. Do you want Nate to start watching those more with you? I would. Uh, if someone look, give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, any of your podcast platforms. I will do a Marvel movie because I'm contractually obligated. Do so Werewolf by Night so we can finally get a nate rant oh, so God. y'all have heard me rant about hansel and gretel gretel why don't you give us that five star review this movie movie is about 50 minutes and i'll talk about it for about 50 seconds that's all it deserves so no you won't you'll get you'll give it a lot you, longer oh god anyway uh yeah yeah request that <laughs> and we'll get to it it'll be like i don't know Ooh, you know, if you give what, us what's what's like the no, what's no, like no, the no. longest here's, i can possibly go between a request and doing the movie here's what y'all listeners say. here's what you do 
You need to get get you and a friend both put in five star reviews. One of you um, just needs to do a five star review for uh, Werewolf by Night. The other one for Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. We will double feature that. Oh, um, God. I, that's still that's somehow awful. four hours worth of, of footage. Uh, most of it that's is awful. Doctor Strange. And let's just really just ruin Nate's night. That would hey, be- we uh, at Fantastic Fest. Uh, one of the contestants for the Fantastic Feud, the uh, the uh, the move, the movie industry, uh, you know, uh, ridiculous Family Feud spinoff, uh, was the guy who wrote Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness, oh. and he was on the winning team. So there you go. There you go. Um- <laughs> All right. Well, look. You can let it, let us know. Let us know how strongly you disagree. And then, and then, and then, like Sylvester Stallone and over the top. Then someone when that happens, like that, like triggers, like it's like shooting off a nuclear missile. Then the other ones come off. This is when this is when Human Centipede needs to like as a retaliate, like a retaliatory review needs to start happening. Well, listen. I let right in. Let us know how strongly you disagree with Nate about his thoughts on werewolf by night, uh, as do over a thousand people, uh, in the audience score and almost a hundred people on rotten tomatoes. Uh, yeah, I'm sure Katy Perry has like more downloads than Led Zeppelin. Sure. I mean, I'm sure that that is the case, but I mean, come on, what, what, what are we talking about here? I mean, Just I don't know why you have to, like I don't know why you have to denigrate, uh, Katy Perry. <laughs> I mean, what'd she do to you, man? You you get mean when you get uh nothing, when you nothing. when you get uh like this um all right well listen uh werewolf by night ninety one percent the movie we're reviewing this week uh sixty eight percent so that is going to be another point of discussion as we talk about this week's movie of the week Hellraiser what's your deal it has six sides six configurations it opens up. And it cuts you. And then they come to collect. It's time. Greater delights await. We wish to see you proceed. Feed it. Their blood, their pain, all for us. What is it you pray for? Oh, an actual movie. Love it. Hellraiser. Love it, Mitch. Colon... But Hulu Razor. I don't know. I don't know. I just kind of just kind of had a tie in. Uh, okay. Well, I'll I'll Nate. I need you to calm down. So take. Why don't you you know breathe in, breathe out. I'll I'll go I'll, while you're doing that. Okay. I will. Okay. Okay. Gavin Rosdale. I will. <laughs> What's happening yeah. here? I will. Uh, I'll I'll give you the uh, elevator pitch. Hey, remember how like cool uh, Hellraiser was? Well, let's just lose the bullshit Matrix gear and uh, redo it. Well, how about 80, 80s leather uh, culture and then just update it with, I don't even know, what what is the, what is the motif that the director told Skin us? Skin leather. Skin <laughs> leather, that's right. <laughs> what if their clothes are just their skin? Pulled no, of- <laughs> real fucking tight. Yeah, I don't know which one's more bullshit. <laughs> now that you say it that way, I'm not 100% yeah. sure. But yes, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so Hellraiser, uh, Nate, what can you tell us about the 2022 classic? We'll find out. And we'll find out. Uh, the the best secret screening at Fantastic Fest this year. <laughs> or by night, we've already established. 2022 is Hellraiser. Uh, world premiere September 28th at Fantastic Fest and released on Hulu uh, a little over a week later. Uh, this last, uh, was it Friday? Yeah, last Friday. Uh, yeah, it's it's a comically low 6.2 on IMDb somehow. Uh, and it is, it's it's two hours and one minute. Didn't feel that long when watching it, but it was, it was good. 
the director is just my at this point the, the director is just my boy uh at, just uh it's david bruckner who you might remember from incredible previous episode the night house that was that the first movie we saw back in the theaters in 2020. It might have been. It was one of the, the first, first or first. is the first or the second. Oh, and it was just incredible. Yeah, give me the night house like a hundred times out of a hundred over his werewolf by night nonsense. Uh, and obviously, Hellraiser previously did The Ritual, which is I believe a Netflix movie, which is good. Uh, he did Amateur Night. Like, the the best uh, segment on the original VHS and very recent news VHS 85 announced. That's right, Mitch, your boy, your boy, Scott Derrickson from uh, just getting out of the strange verse or whatever that is doing VHS 85 with David Bruckner um, and a few others. Uh, and, and your Gigi Guerrero will be there as well. And, and another, another anthology series. Fantastic. What do you think about that? I'm good with it. Okay. You're good. <laughs> I'm <laughs> no. good with it. All right. That's it. I don't know. What was guys, I? Guys, what, what were guys, you looking for? We solved, we solved it. We solved it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that's great. Uh, one of the writers of the film, Ben Collins, uh, who was at uh, the festival, and uh, they, they were a great part of the Q&A, um, wrote The Night House, wrote Hellraiser. Uh, and has got uh, some short films under his belt, but it has two interesting movies in the pipeline, Mitch. Let's see if you can, you can answer with more. You can respond with more than like two words. Uh, there, the the plot is under wraps currently, but there is a movie called The Sisters of Sawin or Samhain, as people uh, will, will, could pronounce it. Uh, a horror movie about the sisters of Sawin. Now, I thought, is this a Halloween 3 sequel? Because that would be incredible. Would be, I'd be much more in on it if uh, if that was the case. If it was like a spiritual Halloween 3 sequel, would that be incredible? From the people who just gave us Hellraiser, writing-wise. Mm, I'm, I'm, right? I'm, I'm, I got I'm, pretty excited about that. I'm tempted, for sure. Yes! Okay. Well, pretty pleased about that. Uh, their next, their other, the other movie that they're working on. Uh, Twenty years after her family was publicly destroyed by her teenage sister's mysterious affliction, a young woman tells the story in her own words, revealing a far more terrifying version of what really happened in her ho- childhood home. It's called A Head Full of Ghosts. Okay. And uh, don't worry. Uh, the sister, when this happens to her, is eight years old. And her sister is older, a little bit older, but definitely a massive children in peril. Movie. Oh, this is uh, this is the new Scarlet Witch movie. Yeah, I'm all in on it. Oh, I don't know what that means. It's oh, it's Marvel. Uh, it's the next Marvel film. It's the new Scarlet Witch. Uh... No, it's not. <laughs> oh, I, I can, I can feel your. That's not I right. can feel Anything your. Could be Marvel. I can feel your blood pressure just rise. Is Mar? Like, is Mar? <laughs> let me just say this: This Marvel is probably the scariest. Guys, we might say, not. Like, we might not even Marvel. get to the movie review. We might literally. We just might not even talk about Marvel. I might, this I might, might turn might into just, a werewolf by night review. I might <laughs> jump out of the the window. That's right next. I might just <laughs> jump out. Just see. This that might be preferable for this. Okay. Um. Yeah, so there's that. Uh, the main actress in this is uh, Odessa Azion. Uh, she she's been in some stuff. She was in a TV series called Ghosts, apparently on CBS. So I think it's less horror than comedy, but hey, that you know, it's ghost esque. Uh, oh, that also, one's actually not too bad. The the BBC version's better, but um, yeah, no, it's actually it's actually pretty funny. Okay, nice. Uh oh I have seen I've I've seen the uh the British ghosts now that I think about it. Yeah, same uh, she's same, also, same basic show. She's also in a movie called For the Night, which Mitch likes because it's got three words and it's night at the end. So it comes at night. Uh oh yeah, it comes at night is four words. God damn it. Can't even count. Uh Werewolf by Night. This one. Uh, a trio of teenage skateboarders. Looking to film in a new location, stumble upon a dark and mysterious discovery. Do you believe this actress as a skateboarder? I would say one thousand percent yes. 
Sure. I mean, she could be a drug addict skateboarder. No problem. Yeah. Through, through Christ, all things are possible. Nate, I guess. So yep. sure. Um, uh, <laughs> what else is possible is, Hey, let's take pinhead or sorry. Hell priest. Uh, and switch it up. Jamie Clayton as pinhead in this one. Uh, really good. So yeah, that's, she's been in tons of stuff, uh, including, uh, Mitch's favorite TV show, Roswell, New Mexico. Same Never guy. seen a single episode of that, but that's fine. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know I enough know. to even, t- even say one have. thing or the other. So she was in also in Mitch's Wait, favorite was Jennifer movie. Love Hugh- was Jennifer Love Hewitt in it? Cause I will start <laughs> watching it. If you're telling me that. <laughs> I'd have to look it up. I'm going to guess no, but I, I'll, uh, apparently, as you said, all things are possible. Um, she was in The Snowman, that terrible thriller movie with uh, Michael Fassbender and uh, Rebecca Ferguson. That was very bad. Uh, she was in Neon Demon, which is a horror film. Mitch, have you seen Neon Demon before? Mm, oh, no. goodness. Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, there's that. He, I, I'm just really getting really disappointed today. I don't know, I don't know what's happening here, Mitch. What's, what's going on? Not seeing Neon Demon. I mean, I know. I'm sorry. What are we, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I've letting you down so much. Uh, you know, <laughs> apology not accepted. Okay. So uh, no, uh, <laughs> the other actors in this movie. Yeah, I don't really care, except for uh, <clears throat> Goran Viznich. Uh, you might remember him from The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Uh, he is the he's Voight in this film. It's pretty great when your last two credits are Hellraiser and This Is Us. <laughs> that's a what that's a one-two punch from your, your most recent filmography. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious, Mitch. What do you think? I, I don't even know what's going on right now. What is the- he had he had an arc on the Santa Clarita diet? Are you are you getting more interested or less interested? I- Roughly the same. I mean, <laughs> he was on 165 episodes of Ur. Okay, just move along. I don't know what to tell you here. <laughs> For others, ER. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fine. I'll. I'll. I'm, I'm gonna mercifully not quite end this yet. So, th- th- this film is going straight to streaming in Hulu. Uh, I guess the only way you really can see it is in theaters, which that is that that ship has basically sailed because uh, the movie's already out. There's no tagline on this one, Mitch, which I thought was pretty ridiculous. Other than from, I mean, it's, you know, it's the classic from the master of horror, Clive Barker, right? That's what all the movies just, you know, used to do that back in the day. So it was a throwback for that, but that's kind of a cop out uh, personally. Um, Yeah, I I guess, I guess that's it. I guess that's it. Uh, I have a bunch of other things to talk about, but let's actually get into the movie. In the spoiler-free edition, overall thoughts on this one, Mitch? Uh, overall thoughts, I mean, it looks really good. Um, I think the Cenobites are, you know, uh, look, when you go to Hellraiser, you, you're you really going in to see a lot of brutal kills. You're expecting a lot of a good bit of gore, and you're expecting really creepy Cenobites. Uh, Cenobites are really creepy. Um the gore, the the deaths aren't so. There's some gory stuff in terms of the actual like creature design and some of that, but the actual kills are relatively tame. I thought, um, compared to like other like earlier entries into the whole franchise, right? Um, it, it's more building. It's it's building it up, yeah, rather than just straight up. But but the body horror yeah. stuff is is still pretty pretty good. Um and, and I mean, you know, we'll talk about in the spoiler part at the end, but like one particular person's uh you know, change is pretty like, oh, like people in the theater were like, ah, oh, good lord. Yeah, you know, right. So so it, it was effective. Um the I really liked what they did differently about the um the the actual uh bo- the puzzle box and all the different configurations I thought that was a really interesting twist on everything. So you're a big you're a big escape room person. Well, I am. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Is the is this puzzle something that you'd be interested in? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd get suckered into this easy. <laughs> okay, so you would be. Yeah. Getting. You'd be getting murdered. I'd be getting. I'd be getting straight shanked up. Yeah, it just I can't avoid it. 
Um, yeah. uh, I, I know myself enough to, to know I, 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 you know, yeah. But what I think is, um, I, I will say, you know, I think where it really did well was we talked about it in number two, you know, the, the, so much of it follows like the same people. And then the stories just get kind of really ridiculous. Um, and we talked about how they needed to be more anthology based where the, yeah, our idea was like the anthology based, like, okay, Pennywise it's different. It's, it's people in different scenarios finding the box and then the, pen, you know, more shorter stories. And then pinhead sort of kind of in the background or the hell priest, excuse me, are kind of in the background. Right. And, and kind of weave through this at least starts on that path. Um, mm-hmm. I think the overall story is fine. Uh, I'm excited for where they could potentially go with this, assuming they don't just follow the same lead. As good as she was in this, I'd say we want to, I'd, I'd like to see a different story, a different thing, right? Um, I don't want to see them all necessarily connected one to the next if they're going to do sequels. But um, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So you, yeah, what, what about you? What, what were you? Um, not quite as high as we're all fine. I'm guessing, but where, where would you? Yeah. It's not as high. Cause it's like above the ground. That one's like, where it's like, it's like gone in the upside down as above. So below, like that's how, that's where my estimation of that one is. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think if it's a setup where every time it's someone different and they're not trying to follow actual through lines or anything like that, I, that, that movie is much more, that movie reboot type of series is much more interesting to me. Yeah, I 100% agree on that one. The I mean, think about it this way. Hulu redid Predator and Hellraiser this year. Uh, we haven't got to Final Cut or spoilers or anything like that, but my overall impression of uh, Hellraiser, I would say, is good. Uh, we are... Go back and listen to our review about Prey. Also, go watch Prey on Hulu. Uh, highly recommend the Comanche dub if you're going to go do that. Uh, two good movies, Mitch. I mean, Hulu on a roll got fresh this year too. Uh, yeah. This is the third Hulu original movie that we are reviewing, uh, and there's a couple others that might make the cut for the end of the year. Pretty good year for Hulu, rebooting beloved franchises, beloved horror, yeah, horror ish franchises. Not bad. Uh, so I'm just I'm just getting a little little little. You can't see my hat moving because I am wearing a hat, but I'm tipping it. Uh, not not bad uh, from Hulu. I, I got to say. I mean, what is Netflix been giving us this year? Horror-wise. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, geez. I mean, can't even get a, can't even get a werewolf by night type level uh, movie at this point. Um, not a whole lot coming out on Netflix uh, horror-wise this year. Uh, that was good. So yeah, I mean, in terms of streamers, I would say Hulu's pretty much the place to be at this point. Yeah, I mean, I I I'd agree. Um, I did watch my best friend's exorcism on Amazon Prime. I have not watched that, and it was and it was it was okay. It was yeah, okay. I've not heard anything. But heard better case. things than Jeepers Creepers Reborn feature episode. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah, no, I mean, so spoiler free section. I mean, so yeah, there's no leather. Uh, it's skin leather. Uh, it looks creepy. I think the overall design of the Cenobites was was really good. Mitch, I just got to tell you, look, the Hellbound Hellraiser colon Hellraiser 2 episode. I complained about the Cenobites literally being unable to move. They moved in this one, Mitch. Mm-hmm. So we're already we're already starting already starting up pretty high. Uh, they moved. Uh, were they moving fast? No, but, they, <laughs> but they were at least using their legs to traverse a distance. So I got to give a credit for that. <laughs> they were so slow. Now that I'm thinking about it, they were quite slow, but it's more dreadful if you move towards someone slowly and it's inevitable. So I'm going to give them credit for that one. Uh, the the Cenobites overall look. What did you think, Mitch? It compared to the previous ones that we've seen. Yeah, I mean, I I already mentioned. I really, I I, I really liked them. Um, I. But it's like, I, is it definitively better than the the, the previous? 
uh, look? Um, you know, it's it's cleaned up. I don't. Some of it, yeah. Some, I mean, chatter. Like, let's talk about. I mean, the original oh, in the Q and A, they were like, "Chatterer is in." Like, yeah, that is a that's a lock. Chatterer yeah. is not going anywhere. We I think bringing that. I think back. the problem with the older ones, just I mean, I guess just the techniques at the time. You know, they're very waxy, kind of looking, and very you know, they don't look as fluid, right? I mean, they're they're in these. You can pretty much tell they're in pretty much really thick suits that are going to be hard to move around in and and all that, right? So every time you see them, they're not really moving a lot, which is fine for how so the characters are written. Skin suits better for mobility, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, and okay. I mean, and and you know, I. I agree with, with taking off like the latex and, and that the BDSM type of stuff. I know they're trying to get away for that because it's not quite as uh, uh, shocking trendy. as it was back in the day. <laughs> uh, yeah, trendy, right? Um, but uh, I, I liked them. I, re- I liked, you know, one of the cool things I thought they did was they put like these like LED diodes on all like the like the pins and all the, you know, all the stuff all over on a lot of them. Um, you know, definitely had, you know, really creepy body modification feel to it more so than the other ones. I, I liked it. Um, I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was a good touch. I, I, I think, I think it's one of those things too, where it's definitely its own thing. It's not conflicting so much with the original where you can't appreciate one or the other. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think I think it's 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 its own thing enough that it's not like you're just upset because it's not the other thing, the one you had previously, or or vice versa. It's its own thing, and so you can enjoy it just on its own merits. Agreed. Going back to the movement, Mitch. Like if you had to put like a mile per hour <laughs> on these Cenobites, what are we talking about, right? Because they have that. I look. I'm looking at it right now, but there's like you know that classic like. Uh, um, infographic showing like animals and, and different, you know, like speeds that they can, they can run at like top speed. Sure. Um, where do you think the Cedo bite falls? I mean, it can't be very high. Um, I, I don't know, but that one, a cheetah one... goes up to 70, a cheetah goes up to 70. A human can go up to 28. Are we talking lower than that? Do I need to go lower? I would say lower. I mean, that's you a know. freshwater crocodile can go ten miles per hour. I mean, they're a casino bite get, get going. I mean, I don't, you know, I I don't know. They ain't working out. You know what I mean? Like, I gotta assume there's some muscle atrophy there from all their because the chains are doing a lot of the work. Yeah, I mean, they they don't have to run, so that's, they're not like training true. for it, right? Like, <laughs> they're not over here doing wind sprints until someone <laughs> solves the the puzzle, right? Like they, you know, like they, when there's like you know. absolutely nothing on TV, and they're just like, "All right, who's the fastest sprinter who needs money in between Olympics? Like, let's have them race a tiger, right? Like that happens like every like couple of years on TV. I feel like sure. So like the seat of bite, like as I'm saying, like what? Okay, so is ten miles an hour too fast? That's top speed, by the way. So like an average one would be running slower. What'd you that. say a nor- an average human is? Twenty? No. Well, the top 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 speed is twenty eight miles per hour. Like Jesus that'd be Christ. like you say, like you say, yeah. bolt then then I yeah, maybe let's go 10, 10 miles per hour. That that seems appropriate. Okay. 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 The average human running speed, like average person is like eight. Okay. That one, that one thing not was like top chasing, speed, not top speed. That speed, one thing right. went off crazy. We can't, you know, without getting too spoilery that there's one scene about that, that was booking it. So, you know, there's variable, I think. Like, what if you, what if you're, your hedonistic pleasure is just to run all over the place. I mean, it seems bizarre, but I mean, granted, a lot of the things that people is that one of the configurations just like, it's like a, like it just turns into a shoe. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's it's leather. So yeah, sure. That's it's, it's in the possibilities. All right. That's incredible. Okay. I hope hope it has some good uh, arch support, but other than that, yeah, it should be great. Um, (laughs) Uh okay that's all right I, I, we, we solved it. it uh so the premise of this one there's a there's a new uh there's a new you know Pandora's box right um sure. it's a little different setup in this one and if you watch the trailer which the trailer was incredible uh, I don't watch trailers often as you know if you listen to the podcast but 
it, you sent it to me, Mitch, and I was like, all right, if you send it to me, and you know, I don't usually like try to watch trailers just for just because I like going in cold. Uh, the trailer was incredible. Uh, the you know, the Pandora's box puzzle is a little different this time. Every time you do a configuration, it doesn't go to the next phase without a giant, you know, sharp spike needing to get blood. Uh, what do you think about that change? That's not really ruining anything. Uh, it's the way they use it, really. That's you know more interesting. But they, 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 you know, the other one was like the cube, right? They had to do a bunch of stuff with. What do you think about that? Did you like that better as well? Because well? it, it's a it's a huge part of the like of the movie. I mean, well, what do you mean? Time. What 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 part do I, that I like better? The- well, like the just the new the new configuration of the. Uh, you know the box to get from from one configuration to the other. Yeah, I mean, I, summoning I, the Cenobites. I, no, I, I, I like, I like that. Is this the MacGuffin of the movie, right? Kind of, yeah. you know, like what do you got? Well, do, I like so. that. I liked, I liked that they sort of stood for different things. I mean, it would have been a, I, I would have liked it a little bit more tie in to what they they are supposed to represent. But I mean, for the first outing, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that it. it I mean, look, the original ones, they talk about it being a puzzle box and it's like they just like are spinning some stuff around and, and it just kind of magically turns into something. Yeah, it's like it's like room the uh, iPad game. Right. This one at least Basically. feels like a puzzle they're unlocking and something's happening and changing. So I I appreciate that. I like that a lot more. So, yeah, I that, okay. that was a really good change for me. God, that should have been the subtitle of the Werewolf at Night. Werewolf at Night colon the Lament Configuration. That you've, you've been holding on to that one, haven't you? <laughs> no, I haven't, but I just thought of it. It <laughs> totally fits. Um, what else do you want to say about this movie? I mean, obviously, we'll get to spoilers right after this, but what else do you want to say? So, unsuspecting victim friendly, uh, kill wise, like you said, not as much explicit kills, but overall imagery and vibe is is I don't think very unsuspecting victim friendly. Um, does, that, does that seem fair? I don't know. I don't think this one's that as, as that that bad in retrospect. You don't think so? No, I really don't. I mean, like I said, the kill. I think I think the body horror parts. I mean, it's certainly it's certainly more like there's certainly more body horror elements to it. But in terms of like, if you're squeamish around like kills and you're worried about like people dying, gruesome deaths, like. I mean, I'm just thinking like other Hellraisers where you're seeing the people's skin literally being ripped, pulled, like pulled away slowly from their, you know, and all that kind of stuff. You don't really get to that level. Um, it's it's a little tamer there. Where you do see it is just in, in the actual Cenobites is where it really gets. So, I, you know, I, th- I think it, I think it's probably fine, particularly story wise. I don't think I, this movie is I, I'll say it's one negative. This movie is it's not overly scary. Okay, I'll put it to you that here. I'll put it to you this way: uh, if you watch Thirteen Ghosts, and that didn't bother you, you're okay. probably okay. fine. This is the original or the Shane Elizabeth one. The Shane Elizabeth one. Okay, I mean, I guess technically both, but I'm I'm more referring to the Shane Elizabeth <laughs> one. Um. So anyway, <laughs> uh, yes, I had to I, I had to specify that. For some reason. For some reason. I had to, I had to specify that. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Uh, cool. Okay. So I guess overall, your recommendation to on this movie, watch, don't watch. Uh, I no. would say watch. I, 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 I watch. I don't think it's the best Halloween movie you're going to see uh, this season, but Ooh, um. Okay. Damn. I would say I would say watch it. It was good. You don't have to pay. For, I mean, outside of a Hulu subscription, you don't have to pay for it. Okay. I I say definitely watch it. Hulu. After you, get the, Hulu, after you, you don't have Hulu, yeah. just get a free trial. And, and look, this it, movie, it, it's a good one. Watch yeah. uh watch Prey while you're there, and watch uh Fresh while you're there too. Just do three for one right around Halloween, and then that's it. Yeah, and you know, and for sure, um, I mean, you're not gonna have to. I mean, what? I mean, what can I tell you? You're not. You you can. This movie's short. 
roughly. I mean, you can squeeze in Werewolf by Night and then uh, and then Hellraiser, kind of back to back. Just hop out. I mean, I think Disney Plus and Hulu are bundled. So you know, if you don't have those, get the bundle, watch them both, and then you, I mean, you're just really you're really in for a, for a treat. A um, lot of monsters overall. Yeah, there's one there's one trick and there's one treat. Yeah, I agree. So dumb. All right. Well, look, listen, <laughs> if you've, if you've been hanging out this long with us, uh, thank you. Uh, but yeah, are people, are they still listening? I don't even know. They're still listening. Probably not. Who knows? But Who if, knows? if uh, you don't want to get spoiled, get out of here, witch. Is it spoiling time? Look, uh, we've talked about all the other. Is that a, was that a, was that a, it's a, it was that a Morbin time <laughs> reference? Uh, anytime I can drop in some Marvel shit on you, that's good. Oh man, if Morbius had been, oh, I didn't even realize that was my god damn it. Oh god, well, mm-hmm. sound like equally good. All, movies, so. all is Marvel. Uh, I mean, technically, they, you know, Disney own. So Disney owns uh the company that create that created this uh Hellraiser. So technically, Pinhead, Sur- Sur- Pinhead well, yeah, is Sur- now Sur- a Disney princess. Well, Disney, yeah, Disney princess. Yeah, damn. Yeah. All right flawless logic there i can't mm-hmm. do anything about it i mean her and the scene and and uh sorry not the scene but the um the xenomorph queen is a princess as well although she's technically a queen you should put respect on the title okay I, yeah i don't i don't know what the difference between that is so um but the the God. the queen God. the xenomorph queen what are you talking about i don't i don't even know what's happening don't worry about it. Just let it wash over you. The important yeah, thing yeah, is yeah. Whatever, we've what, talked what about. So we've talked about what all those. Said. We've talked about everything else with this movie. I, I mean, let's just talk about the story. That's really the only spoilery part. Um, so, you know, this the story is really about addiction and how it. Yes. You know how how it can impact other people around you um, in a mildly victim blaming sort of or uh, the addiction blaming sort of way, <laughs> addict blaming sort of way. But um not not so egregious. Yeah, addiction is not good. That's that's the that's the through line of this movie. Addiction is not good. Well, so so basically these these are the last two movies from David Bruckner. Uh suicide's not good. Addiction's not good. <laughs> Those are the two takeaways from his last two films. So there you go. Uh Mitch, what do you okay, counterpoint. What do you what do you got? Um I mean, you know, what what are we addicted to here, right? Uh <laughs> I don't know. Get, I, I'm addicted to skin leather. Please, please, if you're gonna give us a five star review or call, well, then we have such three four six two four six three one four three sites to show you. Um, I, I don't. I don't want to see that. I, I have those blocked on Google, so I, I have no. <laughs> I have no sites. I have, oh sites. Oh God, man. <laughs> that's the next one. There is there. Oh my God! If you did an unfriended Hellraiser crossover movie with the dark web. That would be incredible. That that's where the Cenobites would live if they got on the internet. They'd be on the dark web, wouldn't they? I mean, at this point, they'd probably just be on the regular web. I don't think there's. Oh uh, uh, yeah, that's. Which, <laughs> don't don't really think they have to hide that much. Uh, you know, it's, it's <laughs> they're just running. They're just running a subreddit. Yeah, they're, right. They're, they're, they're on. Like, they're they're on four chan. Um, I just uh, the story. I, I, the story is fine. Uh, it's not like the it's not the most groundbreaking story. I mean, frankly, um, the Mirror House or whatever the hell the first the first one was a much better story. And I think he even said in the Q and A that that was really effectively a Hellraiser reboot. But when they kind of pitched it and they didn't really get going with Hellraiser, they just kind of rewrote it to um, basically not have Cenobites. But it was very similar at, in themes. Um, and frankly, it was it was a really good. That was a really good story. This one's okay. Um, again, I think the acting overall is good. And um, I just, you know, I rewatched it. And on my second viewing, I didn't care for it as much um, as I did when I first saw it in the theater. And, you know, part of it was, I think, just the, hey, it's the secret screening. We're in a movie theater uh we're the first people to see this there was a lot more i mean i think that some of that just the the environment was different and i think seeing it in theaters is a little different too than maybe watching it just at home right um but this movie felt especially toward the end it really felt like it turned into 13 ghosts 
the re- it, it almost turned into a 13 Ghosts remake more than it did a Hellraiser remake. And I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> well, if, I just, if, you, if you just told me that, I would, it sounds bad. That that's if you just I mean even the house way, is is bad. is like it it just has the same like sliding door contraption things and um you know oh my every, god every if Matthew Lillard was in this uh, right if they were all wearing glass I mean yeah if Matthew Lillard was the billionaire guy that'd be tight ooh that would actually have been quite good okay. I mean maybe we have a you're, crossover you're there I don't know who players. owns these franchises and rights anymore. Um, but even like I mean, because even the monsters wow. kind of okay. similar. I, yeah, I, you know, it's really funny because I think this maybe this is like the most things. Right? There's so much uproar about. I think there's a lot of controversy and and really stupid controversy. I should say about you know, um, pin you know, the recasting of Pinhead, which is real dumb that we're all getting really bent out of shape about who plays a uh, person with nails bolted in their head <laughs> i don't know wait was someone complaining about that oh no, she was she was great oh people were not thrilled that pinhead was uh, a woman oh, anymore boo. which is okay. well i mean yeah it's all ridiculous right i mean again this is uh, of, of all the things in, in everyone's lives this is the thing we want to and, and and it's much ado about a story that really isn't a whole lot there to it right i mean yeah, You're, during I mean during the Q and A, they were talking about how the original story that you know is very androgynous person. I don't, I don't think it really, in terms of source materialness, it's. I mean, people. I mean, look, obviously, like you know, the original Hellraiser, you know, is is beloved. Doug Bradley is quite good as yeah. Pinhead, I would say generally. Uh, but I mean, you can't have the same guy, you know, this like far in the future, so. That yeah. guy's that guy's it's like it's like it's like getting like Robert England to be like Freddy Krueger again. Like if you got another Freddy Krueger, you could pretty much go any direction at that point. Right? Well, maybe so. don't go the direction they went. But uh Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The movie was terrible. <laughs> um, uh, uh, was you so can go bad. any direction, but there are some bad ones. Uh, yeah. uh <laughs> so no, I thought I thought I thought Jimmy Clayton was really really great in this. She's a she it's a different hell priest. But it's still good. It's still really good. It's still, you know, it's still a unique character. I think the positives about this film are really that it does a really good job paying homage and and separating itself enough that it's to me, it really does feel like its own movie. It's certainly one of the better of the Hellraisers. But like I said, the story is just, I, I don't know. I'm trying to even think, even from a spoiler perspective, right? I mean, it's nothing that we haven't seen in any of the other ones. It's rich you know rich dude has been finding people to basically open up all the configurations so that he can you know talk to god and get his heart's desire which of course is not going to work out and he becomes a wind-up toy and how's that oh that wind that wind-up toy uh prosthetic in his back where it's like pulling his uh it literally was a thing that just at random intervals would just pull on his nerves yeah. And it was a huge contraption. That, that was probably, probably the most like pain lot. one of the pain. The the rich dude that had was the most painful looking shit Ugh. like on him and Ooh. it was rough. Well, and his final scene where he got cenobited was Oh yeah. Wait, and, you, and you see wait, his like I, lip I skin like pulled off and all that. Oh the my thing God. about the thing about when groin skin gets pulled up, I don't I don't care for that. I don't care for <laughs> that at all. That's a, is that a bold stance? I don't like I don't I yeah, I was, I was, I was like, ooh. Yeah, everyone ooh, in the theater for this was in was hurting, and and well, this is this is at a film festival where pr- previously, like two nights before, they had a whole super cut of the hundred worst, like, uh, m- you know, dick, male, yeah, dick, dick destruction, dick on destruction. Film. Yeah, so, and we every- sat next to the person who curated that, <laughs> and even they were just like, oh, I don't know about this. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it was, I know. Yeah, so that yeah. that's that's the that maybe part is unsuspect is not unsuspect. But they, they saved it to the end. Yeah, it it yeah. It, it escalated right. So the, yeah, as the movie goes on, it gets a little bit more. Um, yeah, it gets a little bit more explicit and just yeah, you know, skin I, tearing and all that stuff that you cut you know hooks into yeah. things that you couldn't expect. I guess my stuff. question is, I mean, did you really at any point did you? Did you ultimate and, and and again this is this ties into my just general beef with the Hellraiser franchise in general. 
did you really care about any of these people or were you just kind of like watching it going get get to whoever's going to get shanked by the by the thing next um and let and let's let's move <laughs> on like one person didn't even solve the box they just stabbed her in the back and she's like oh well now i'm getting killed by the like the rules for solving the puzzles don't make any sense like what's in the box like Sorry. i solved it but i just didn't I, I didn't touch the sharp part so i guess i'm okay Seems like a, I mean, I get the blood, blood thing, but I, I don't know. Then they're just like stab. I mean, you just like shove the, what if I just, what if I literally just had like when the boxes and I think the lament configuration where it's, or, or maybe it's the, the Leviathan. It's just like the big, like diamond looking one. I just, just shanked. I didn't even solve it. I just shanked someone in the back. Are they just immediately like that just calls them or do you have to solve or truly solve it first? Very, you know, it's, it's kind of weird. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. And then they like, but then they like were able to sacrifice a Cenobite to it. And they're like, okay, that works too. Like it got real weird. <laughs> I don't, I didn't mind it. It was just, it was just a little bizarre for my taste. Um, I just, yeah, I just didn't care about anyone except for maybe the main, the, the, the lead. Um, but I don't really think like I, this movie was trying to have this message of, you know, how addiction hurts everyone around, how it hurts those around you as well as you, you know, but I don't know. Maybe if she was, maybe it, it would be, it would have been more profound if she was actually fully still in the, in the throes of, of her addiction versus being recovering and all that. I, I don't know. For some, it just didn't land as well. I, I get what they were trying to do. It just didn't, didn't land as well, at least on the second viewing anyway. Yeah, I agree. It, it was, I mean, it was all just a setup, obviously. And, and addiction yeah. was like the through lines we talked about. But yeah, was it? Gr- I mean, yeah, it, the story wasn't. It wasn't bad. By no, 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 no. It wasn't. It was not a bad. It was a. It was a fine enough story. Um, you know, if you, and I think if you're not familiar with any of the any of the Hellraisers, this is probably a good intro into it. You know, I. I you know, I I think this is one of those films at the end of the day where if you if you loved Hellraiser and the originals, you're probably not thrilled with this movie. A- admittedly, you know, it's probably you're probably kind of like, yeah, everyone looked cool, but uh, this movie, uh, whatever. It's it's not gonna have all that stuff, right? <laughs> but this movie, but this movie's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, Nate, okay. not everyone, not everyone, you know, has the practice of expressing their. Uh, opinion as eloquently as uh, you and I do as I stammer through my point. Uh, <laughs> no, I just mean, I, I, I do. Th- I do think I do think fans of like big fans of the franchise probably won't like this one. But I think I think this is a good intro uh, in, into Hellraiser. Um, like if I had watched this first, I'd probably be a lot more interested in, in re- going back and rewatching the the older one. And I'm probably being disappointed because again, this is this is certainly I think up there with one and two in terms of quality. But um, I just you know again part of my part of my thinking of like it would have been better had this been like an anthology and six different people had changed the configuration, and then the final thing was someone had to. What wouldn't this have been better, Nate? If the movie had been instead of just like six random people that or not six random but six six people that just happen to know this person they're changing the configuration they they somehow get you know shanked and and get you know taken into Cenobite world shanked and ganked yep yep what wouldn't it have been better had it been different people and they had different levels of addiction or vices i mean you almost could have done a seven deadly oh, sins at this point and the final one was someone who was like i've been researching this i've been looking for this everywhere and it's i finally have like you could have still had the through line of the person the the rich tycoon guy like setting setting people up for it and being oh. sort of that villain because he was doing that and that was an interesting i mean he that was effectively the through line like hey you found this i found this person and I think it would have been better had each configuration been a little bit more of a um, an anthology tie back type to of the thing. Main the- well, tie back to the main theme, just yeah. generally. And yeah, then the that- and then the final one being him Ooh. him getting the the you know. Um, I just think that would have been a more compelling story for me, I, I, and that's just I, again because because otherwise, 
these other people don't matter. Like I, her, her, her brother trying to, okay. Uh, they're friends. They're the roommates that they live with. Sure. You're all fodder. So <laughs> you're, you, your characters exist really to just have someone to, to, for, you know, uh, the help priest to just gank. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, Ooh, yeah, that would have been, I would like that. Well, hey, that it could it could be the second one. Yeah, agreed. I, I again, I think I think what this at least shows us is there's a lot of promise in what they could go go with next, where they could go with this. I just and that's my point. I don't want to see this main. She she did a great job. I just don't want to see her character again. Let's like move. It should go to some someone else should find this, and now it kind of picks up, or you know. Yeah, no, I yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think yeah, that that could actually be that could be pretty solid. I like that. Okay. Damn. That's 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 a good one. All right. You should get, get you should have got with those writers and started. I should have. A lot of people were there Damn. and then you know. <laughs> and then you and I were doing shots, which doesn't help anything. We were. We were doing know. shots. Um, it was either that no, but this, <laughs> this was the bet for us doing shots, guys. It was either Hellraiser. Uh, and I get to pick the shot or it was Hocus Pocus too. <laughs> and Mitch got to pick the shot because it was all Disney owned properties that were the, uh, the main screenings. Uh, including someone, the- someone yeah. thought that it was going to be the bar. It was going to be the new Barbie movie. And I got really excited about that more so than I thought I would be. It yeah, pretty- that, I don't know why, but yes, it looks incredible. <laughs> the prim- the idea of it is on its face is really ridiculous, but I'm excited about it. Um, <sighs> Nate, anything else to talk about? I mean, from a spoil, I there's really not a lot to spoil know. in this one. It's it's a it's a pretty paint by numbers horror film. It is, uh, but I think it opens up a lot of opportunities. Oh, pun intended, I guess. Uh, it opens up a lot of opportunities for new stuff. And this is a franchise that Ooh. you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of franchises that could use this level of like, you know, thought and care and in budget. To be honest. Uh, for like a reboot, right? To come back in, like the Prey, you know, Prey 2 is already coming out, right? Like that's that's a lock for yeah. sure. I can't imagine another Hellraiser won't come out either um, just based on, on uh, you know, how much money they put into it and how how good I thought it was. Apparently not. But oh, apparently Werewolf by Night 2 already greenlit or something. But I yeah, I think I think this is just an example of like, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I think some people won't like it. I don't think it's as good as the first one. I think it's probably not quite as good as the first one, but it's pretty close or maybe the same. It's probably tied for me, to be honest. If I'm not a huge Hellraiser person. That's not bad for a remake. If your remake is like close to as good as the first or second best movie in a franchise with how many movies was that? Eight, nine movies that we looked at last time. Uh, that's not bad. So I, I take it. I, I, yeah, if it would do a little something a little different, lean on the addiction angle more, uh, you know, tie it into a little bit more of like a central theme. Like the story be is more than just getting ganked by cool looking Cenobites. Um, that would really like take it to another level for sure. To the next, the next level Pro- proceed yeah. uh, to the next level. But yeah, it was, it was good. It's, it's good. Not as good as prey though. If I had to pick, if I had to pick one, um, Predator, predator, uh, red, red dots on my head. I would go pray over this one personally, but yeah, I would, I, I would rank them that way as well. Uh, is lo- pray like my favorite movie of the year? Practically, uh, who knows? I mean, it could be. Um, well, end of the year rankings will be very interesting for this. But yeah. I mean, it sounds like it is. Let me ask you one <laughs> one last question, and we'll get to final cut. Uh, so there, the end of this, he has to pick which one he wants, right? I mean, there's six configurations. Uh, to remind you, um, let's see. They are uh, lament for life, lore, knowledge. There's lottery, love, liminal is sensation, Lazarus is resurrection, and Leviathan is power. Which one are you going with? You're, you've got you're talking to God. Which which uh uh I'm gonna go with the one where I don't get murdered. So I'm gonna go lament. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't. I just. I just. I want it. I don't want any of that. I don't want any of that. I don't want yeah, to be I don't know. Like, I don't want what happens when like, you lore the person does your brain, I want. Does your head just turn into a book that just constantly opens and closes, you know, or well, there was, if you saw the other Clive Barker Hulu movie, uh, from 2020 books of blood, that's literally, 
that's lit. It's a it's a person's face's books is the is the poster. Tight. <laughs> well, the poster is better than the movie. So, <laughs> <If you, laughs> but uh, anyway, that uh, doesn't, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't shock me. But <laughs> yep. Uh, but no, it's a uh, it's a. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, all of them sound terrible. Oh, so someone's going to come back, but they're going to be like a terrible shell of themselves. That sounds awful. I don't like any of that. So, I, yeah. I'm, uh, but I'm, you know, I'm, I, I don't even mess with any of that. So mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a wuss. I'd be terrible at these movies. I'd just be like, I'd be like, it'd be a, it'd be Jordan Peele's short film. Nope. Something would happen. I'd be like, I hate this. I'm out. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and then, uh, fade to black. So what, which one would you pick? That's the question. I mean, look, if you've already gone this this far down the rabbit hole, like, you know, um, I don't really know what power really got got him at the end of the day, besides just being like affixed to the pyramid. Um Man, I don't know. Sensations sound terrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that I mean like the absolute worst one, maybe? Got to be one of the first know. three, either lament, lore, or 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 love. I would go maybe lore. I honestly, what's I don't yeah I don't know what that is. I like I said I mean yeah if you've come look, look up that book, book face head, look yeah. at that look at that book face thing. Is it really called book face? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't don't Google book face, everyone. I just don't 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 be me and book do Mark, that. Mark Mark Zuckerberg is gonna like sue you if you do that. <laughs> right. so it's copyright. All right. Well, look, Nate. Uh, all that's left to do now, I need to know what's your final cut. Final cut. <laughs> take us home, Nate. Where are we? Where yeah, I'll take you home to the Paradise City where the the skin is leathery and the chains are pretty. Let's go like with, let's go with, it did drop in my estimation a little bit. I will say after watching it again, still good. I think I would, I didn't think this went down maybe, maybe one point just in the cold, sober eye of watching it on a television and not in a movie theater where it's really easy to get pumped up. I look, I will say this. I understand why people give better reviews to things when they go to festivals because it's just a way it's like a cool atmosphere um you know mitch mitch is watching movies and then getting pictures with chris jericho i mean come on like what he's not going to be more excited about that so i dropped at one point down to a six out of ten configurations Mm because there are six so there you go it's it's good it's better than werewolf by night and well, it's not hard, but it's good. It was the best secret screening. But in general, I'm pretty pumped about, you know, like this is the most excited I've been about Hellraiser probably ever. Because not, it's not saying a whole lot. It's not saying a whole lot for me, but if I was, you know, I don't know. I, I think I think it's a it's a good start. The pin look, the pinhead is 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 good it's a obviously a different take but i thought it was sufficiently creepy for sure and like we said it opened up a lot of opportunities um to go different places hopefully it goes anthology hopefully they're in different places or maybe even different times whatever right they've been around for a long time you get you could just assassins creed this up all over the place if you'd like um there's a lot of opportunities to do some of this stuff that I think could be really cool. And hopefully they get the budget to do that. So yeah, yeah. six out of 10. Nice. What about you, Mitch? I am leaning the same. I I, I was pretty much at six, six out of 10 when we started. The last two movies, we have been at a six, both of us. Smile and Hellraiser. Well, and I think that considering where we have these two movies kind of in our list, again, I think at when I had Hellraiser higher in my list, post fantastic fest but like i said i watched it again and i th- I think maybe i was a little biased just to being seeing it in the theater um well that's it, how you saw it i mean that you can't get, can't get rid of bias we both think starship troopers is a 10 out of 10 movie why is that <laughs> it's, it's not because of rational thought bitch 
<laughs> That's fair. I'm still gonna yeah, go lean into out. it. Lean, let's lean into it. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I'm still gonna lead six out of six. Uh, six out of six. Uh, six out of six. A hundred percent. Oh, six out of ten. Jesus. Uh, chattering. Uh, chatterers. Um, yeah. I, I mean, again, I, I. There's a lot to like about this. I'm excited for. I, I want to see a sequel. I'll put it that way. I'm. I, I would like for them to make a sequel of this movie. Um. I'm just hoping for, yeah, again, I don't want to follow the same people. I want to see some different folk. Okay. All right. Well, Nate, where, where can they find us? You can find us as always with your werewolf by night slash Dr. Strange slash whatever garbage Marvel movie reviews you would like to, I guess, torture me with. That's you're you're my scene bite at that point. Uh, give us a call. Three, four, six, two, four, six, three, one, four, three. Let us know. Werewolf by Night versus Hellraiser. They're both, you can stream them both. Which one do you like better? Uh, give us that five star review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Tune In Radio, Podcast Addict, all of them. And uh, apparently get a friend to do it and do multiple. That's Mitch is actively wanting people to collude against. Mm-hmm. Him. So yes. there's that. Um, yeah, so do that. Uh, Texas Podcast Massacre at gmail.com. Send us your emails. Uh, yeah, we're in October. This is, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Uh, there are tons of new movies out on streaming services and in the theaters for horror. This is a prime time horror time. That was not, it could have been worded better. But horror movies are, are, are coming out again. Um, on a variety of platforms. Unfortunately, Jeepers Scrapers Reborn is one of them. Future episode. Uh, and yeah, en- enjoy the season. We're going to. Uh, we should have uh, some interesting crossover episodes coming up in the future and some other exciting stuff. Uh, so stay tuned. Absolutely. All right. Um, well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode from all of us here at Texas Podcast Massacre. Thank you so much for tuning in and just keep telling yourself it's only a movie. Good night. Good night.